Hello and welcome everybody! In today's Lightroom video I'm going to show you the in-depth process of how I take this raw file right here and how I turn it into a very interesting, dynamic and colorful picture like this while explaining every single step from the basics adjustments to the tonal curve to the different color adjustments in the split toning and even to the local adjustments such as dodge and burning to complexify the lighting even more. Display your pictures and work with your very own professional and beautiful portfolio website built with SmugMug. With SmugMug you can do just that and build your own professional photography website without any coding knowledge required. Choose from dozens of beautiful templates, it has unlimited storage to upload all of your pictures that you want and the best thing of all, it starts from less than $3 a month. If you would like to learn more and get your 14 day free trial today, then be sure to check out the link in the video description. Alright, so we're here in Lightroom and this picture was actually shot at sunset and even though it's not the most spectacular picture, in the background we do have some nice clouds and some nice colors and in terms of the overall lighting scheme it's just so soft yet it is very colorful and very structured so I absolutely love this picture and I really think there's a lot to be done and really a lot of color adjustments and dynamic adjustments on all of that to at the end really Really get a great picture. So first of all I'm just going to bring down the highlights to recover all of this highlight detail with the clouds and as you can see just a huge difference. I'm also going to bring up the shadows just so we have a little bit more shadow detail to work with although I don't want to bring it up too much otherwise we really lose the mood and the overall kind of style of this picture. So just around plus 25 works pretty really well. Then I'm also going to bring up the white to add some additional dynamic to the photo. You can press down the alt key and see wherever anything clips and if it's really just such a small spot it doesn't really matter all that much. You just want to make sure that your picture doesn't look something like this because then you're really going to have a very large area with complete whites which of course doesn't look very uh, pleasing. So what I'm going to do here is just go to around plus 29, 30 works pretty well and from before to after it really adds just that little bit of extra dynamic. Then with the blacks, the blacks are actually quite difficult because I might even bring them down just a little bit but I don't want too dark shadows but also I don't want to have a very flat picture so just around minus 10 works pretty well here and in terms of the contrast I think I'm also gonna add just a little bit of contrast to add an additional pop. So then clarity is actually a very difficult thing because I like the minus clarity just as much as the plus clarity. The minus clarity tends to work really well with very soft pictures such as this one but I do like some areas being in the plus clarity. So what I'm actually going to do here is just go a little bit into the minus clarity at the start and then maybe go into the local adjustments later on and just add some local clarity where it's needed. So I like this look as of yet, although we definitely have to adjust the color temperature. Now I don't want to make this picture super warm, especially now that start because I'm going to add some warmth in the split toning later on, but I do want to make the picture just that little bit more warm than it was before. Also tint, I really like to just bring it a little bit into the magenta range, especially with sunset pictures and that already gives a very nice starting base. And then to vibrance and saturation which are the last two basic adjustment slider. They kind of do the same job, generally speaking vibrance adds color more subtle than the saturation. Although I would really suggest you to play around with both and even go with a mixture if it's needed to really get the best possible look. So here because the picture is just a little bit flat I think for now I'm gonna add a little bit of vibrance and a bit more saturation. This is really just the starting point. I can of course always go back to them and change them later on. But for now let's just see from the raw file to the after picture. It has a little bit of a difference, definitely a bit more punchy, more contrasty and especially of course the background is a lot more visible. 
So then let's go down to the tonal curve and bring up the highlight slider just a little bit here. The highlight slider and the tonal curve will just affect the very bright parts of your picture, whereas the highlight slider in the basic adjustments will just affect the kind of, you know, very broad overall brightish areas. As you can see here, very broad adjustment, whereas the highlight slider in the tonal curve really just affects the very bright parts. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit and the light slider is kind of an in-between between the highlights and the highlight slider in the basic adjustments. So just play around with this one. I don't have a particular setting that I go to. It's very, very different with every single picture, but I think bringing it down works pretty well. Then with the darks, I don't think I really have to change too much of them and the shadows are just kind of like the highlight slider in the tonal curve. It really just affects the very dark shadows and tones that you have in your picture. So here, I think once again, there's not really too much needed, maybe just a little bit into the minus. So what I have here before the tonal curve and after, especially within the clouds, it's a little bit more interesting and it's just a little bit refined. So once again, from before to after. Then the HSL tool is actually something I'm gonna leave out for right now because it changes the color in a very subtle way. So I'd rather do the other adjustments first and go down to the split toning and split toning is actually very important, especially with sunset pictures. So first of all, as you can see, I've added a little bit of warmth here in the temperature, but I didn't add as much as I really wanted to. And that is because temperature really adds color very, very even over the entire picture. And I just like to have a kind of neutral almost starting base. So now what I'm going to do is go down to the split toning highlights and add some warmth here in the highlights. And what this will do is also add warmth to the picture, but in a very selective area. So as you can see, even if I bring it up really crazily high with the saturation, it really affects the dark parts very, very little and in fact almost not at all. And the thing is, of course, naturally, the color is coming from the highlights. So by adding just color in the highlights here, you will get an overall much more natural look a much more differentiating look than what you would get by just adding a ton of warmth here in the temperature slider. So once again, gonna go down here to the split toning highlights and just choose a nice amount of first of all hue. So I just wanna fine tune that and really figure out the exact uh, hue that I want and then go down into the saturation and just fine tune that one. So once again, here's before and he added highlights in the split toning and here is after. Once again, don't wanna go too far as of yet. And it's more than I use in most of my pictures, but it does work pretty well here. And then with the shadows, shadows don't tend to have such a big impact, but I still wanna play around with it and see if there's anything I like. So in this particular picture, I don't really think, maybe just a little bit of blue here, really just, you know, a hint of saturation, nothing close to what I've done with the highlights. And I do think it actually works to create some differentiation within the picture. So here's before any split toning, here's after, huge difference. And we got all of that warm tones that I wanted, while at the same time having this beautiful differentiation that we would not have had with the temperature slider. So let's go down to the detail tool. And detail tool is actually very important whether you want to print your picture or even just share it online. So it definitely makes your picture look a lot more crisp and clean at the end. So it's really just a thing that you should do in every single photo, but at the same time, it will not change your look of the picture very drastically. So what I'm gonna do here is just zoom in so I actually see the detail. This was by the way shot with a Canon 18 to 55 kit lens. And for that, it actually has a lot of detail. So first of all, uh, what I'm gonna do is just add some sharpening. And I'd really like to add sharpening in pretty much all of my pictures, anywhere between 50 all the way to around 80, depending on your lens, depending on the circumstances where you shot it. But here, I really think around 50 works the best. Anything else is almost too much. Once again, because we already have this uh, very lot of amount of detail in the picture. 
So then once I've added sharpening, I just want to zoom out again, hold down the masking slider while holding down the alt key and just bring that to the right so I get a sharpening mask and then just make sure that I don't have any of the non-textured surfaces selected for sharpening. So for example here, most of the sky and all of these very blank areas, if I would just add sharpening there, it would just introduce noise and that's of course something you don't want. So I do think that looks pretty good, then down to the noise reduction. I really don't like noise reduction because it gets rid of so much sharpness, so much clarity, so much crispness of your picture, even if you just add a little bit. So what I would suggest you to do here is unless you have a ton of noise, just leave it alone, leave it at zero. And if you do have a ton of noise, then you might want to add a little bit of noise reduction, but really just as much as you need. So then the last thing is color noise reduction and color noise reduction is an amazing thing. So especially if you look at the dark shadow tones, you will see it even better. As I bring it to the right, it will just make the picture look so much cleaner. And that is because it gets rid of the purple and green sensor noise that is in the picture. And this is something that you probably won't even notice until you see the difference from before to after. And I'm not even sure how well you're going to be able to see this on video. But I can promise you in person and especially if you're going to do a print, this is going to have a very very severe impact to your photo. And if I zoom out here, it really doesn't have any bad impact on the color either. So it's really an amazing slider, just bring it to the right and it will just make your picture look a lot cleaner. So then let's go down to the lens corrections. What I want to do here is just click on remove chromatic aberration. And what this will do is just get rid of any of the purple and green fringing on any of the high contrast edges. For example, here on this house before you can see this fringing and afterwards it is just gone. So really great thing, just click on it and that is done. Then the second thing that I'm gonna do is enable profile corrections and just choose my lens. Once again, in this case, the Canon 18 55 kit lens and this will get rid of the distortion and also of the vignetting of the picture. So now we have a really nice starting base. Let's just check real quick from the raw file to the left to the picture towards the right, which we've edited so far. And it's really a lot more interesting, especially color wise. We have it warmer, of course, but also we have all of this differentiation within the colors of the picture. So then let's go on with the effects and with the effects, you can add some additional vignetting. So vignetting works really well to get some more attention on the center of the picture and also, especially in dark pictures, just to kind of set the mood. So what I'm going to do here is just add a little bit of vignetting, bring the midpoint a bit more towards the center. And as you can see, midpoint is just how much vignetting you want in your picture. And I'm also going to bring the feather to the right and feather is just how soft the graduation from the vignetting to the rest of the picture is. So I'm just going to bring that to around 75 and of course normalize my amount so it isn't as overdone. And I do think around minus 16 works pretty well in this picture. So here's before any vignetting, here's after. It really sets the mood and once again gets even more attention towards the center and less towards the edges. Alright, so lastly what we have in the global adjustments is the camera calibration and the most important thing that you have here is profile. It's very important to play around with it. What this will do is just change the color and the overall lighting scheme. It's a very subtle adjustment in this particular picture, but in some of the other pictures it can have a much bigger adjustment and a much bigger effect. So I would just suggest you to play around with it and at the end stick with whatever you like best. So let's just see here from a dope standard, which is with the default to camera portrait. I actually kind of like it, but I do think the blue tones don't look as nice. And then camera standard also doesn't really look all that great, but compared to a dope standard, it's almost Let's actually see here. Yeah, I think maybe a camera standard or camera neutral works a little bit better. So once again, just play around with it. Very different from picture to picture, but here is from a dope standard to camera neutral. I do like the effect that it has. 
then the other sliders that you have here is the primary colors and primary colors it's kind of hard to explain but for example if I would change the blue here it will also affect the greens the, which are also made out of blues a certain amount of course so I think the best way to do here is once again just play around with it and at the end stick with whatever you like best because there's no set tactic it's very different from picture to picture and at the end you're gonna see it the best once you just play around with it. So I'm just gonna change them real quick. I don't really go too far in either direction with either one of them. Really just a little bit into the minus, a little bit into the plus and then choose from there. And in terms of the saturation, maybe a little bit into the plus and then lastly the blues. I don't think I wanna change anything in terms of the hue. But in terms of the saturation, maybe just a little bit into the plus. So here's before any camera calibration, here is after. The colors are just a little bit more complex, a little bit more refined. And I do like the overall look. So then, even though this is actually technically the last global adjustment, as you can maybe remember, I left out the HSL tool because it does have a very, a very subtle adjustment on the color. But now that I've adjusted all of the other global adjustment, I think it's time for the HSL tools. And I would really suggest you just to grab this little pin pointer and go over a color in your picture and just bring up and down the mouse and just uh, change it according to that because some colors are mixed maybe out of two or three different colors that you have here in the sliders so it's really the easiest to just grab this little pin pointer so here with the greens maybe a little bit of a different green tone and I'm gonna do the same thing with the blues although I definitely don't want to go that far here maybe just a little bit into the minus and in terms of the other colors, we don't really have too many different, uh, very rudimentary colors here. The only other thing that I see is kind of the yellow orangey color. And I don't really want to change too much there. So I do think that looks pretty good in terms of the hue, then go to the saturation, do the exact same thing. Just grab this little pin pointer and bring up or down the saturation according to your liking. I think I'm going to bring up the greens here, maybe actually just a little bit into the minus blues and then go into the oranges once again and just see what works best here. And then lastly, what you have is the luminance. Once again, do the exact same thing. And I'd really like to bring up the luminance a little bit in most cases, just to give even more of a pop, even more differentiation within the lighting. That is especially with the dark colors um, or the areas that are filled with the colors that are in shadows. So for example, for the sky, it might not really work to bring up the blues, rather bring them down a little bit. But with the greens, it really managed to add some more differentiation and complexification. So here is before any HSL tool adjustments, here's after. It's not a big difference once again, as I said, but at the same time, it does change the overall complexity and differentiation within the colors themselves very quite severely. So once again, that is before, after, especially in the foreground to the mid-ground to the background, it's a much more distinct differentiation. So then we're finally done with the global adjustments. If you're still watching, then I do appreciate it a lot. I really try to bring a lot of information in a very concise format, even though the tutorial at the end might be like a half an hour or longer. So anyways, let's go here into local adjustments. And I truly think that this picture is made for local adjustments because the lighting scheme is very, very soft. And there's just so much more dynamic and color that we can add to this picture and really make everything even more interesting, more dynamic and more complex. So first of all, what I'm actually gonna do here is go to the graduated filters and drag one over the sky. And here I just wanna add a little bit of contrast, maybe a bit more saturation while also fine tuning the tonalities, really just a little bit into the saturation. And let's just see here, maybe a bit more into the plus whites, minus highlights. 
And with the clouds, uh, I don't think there's terribly too much to be done. So it's always a good idea to grab a graduated filter for the sky, just so you can fine tune the little things such as color or um, contrast and stuff like that. So here's before that one, here's after. It looks just a little bit more punchy, a little bit more pronounced, so not a big difference, but it does add to the picture. Then I'm gonna add another graduated filter, this time for the bottom. By the way, you can hold down the shift key and you will get a perfectly straight graduated filter. And what I wanna do here is just add a little bit of minus exposure to add some more custom vignetting and also to close out the picture from the bottom. So the bottom is relatively dark, going into this medium, going into the bright parts of the house. And that really creates additional interest as you can see from before to after. It's a small difference, but it does add to the picture. Then the next thing I wanna do is go and grab an adjustment brush and just add a little bit more vignetting on just certain areas. For that, you wanna make sure that your feather is to 100. And I'm just gonna add some more vignetting here on the bottom, here on the sides. And I do think that actually works pretty well. So here's before that adjustment brush, here's after, and it just refines the picture a little bit more. And before I actually go into the dodge and burning, let me go back to the global vibrance and saturation because I think the picture still is a little bit dull. So what I'm gonna do is just bring up the vibrance as well as saturation just a little bit more. And I do think that works even better. But now I'm gonna add the dodge and burning. And dodge and burning is just making individual parts darker or brighter. And I really like to use the radio filter for that. You wanna make sure that your feather is at 100 and that you invert the mask. And by adding dodge and burning, you can really make your picture so much more interesting, so much more dynamic, and you can also adjust the colors within a very small area. So first of all, I'm just gonna add some plus exposure rail filters for that. I'm gonna go here into the plus exposure. Also mix that with a little bit of whites and maybe even a little bit of actually minus contrast and just a hint of minus clarity. And at the end, I'm just gonna stick uh, with the color, maybe a little bit of warm color actually, just something like that, but definitely not too much. So now what I'm gonna do is first of all, if you have never done Dutch and Burning, just look at the picture and look where it could still use some differentiation in terms of the lighting and where it is perhaps a little bit dull. So for example, in this picture, there are so many areas that are still kind of dull. For example, this entire house and um, I'm just gonna add a filter right here. It is very important that you set the actual values according to the area that you add Dutch and Burning because it can be very different from place to place. For example, over here, I don't wanna go quite as far into the plus exposure, but then I'm just gonna right click, duplicate, and just drag them all over the picture and at least to where I think it's needed. Also, definitely with this door, I'm gonna make this one a lot brighter, even go more into the plus exposure here, then right click duplicate, do the same with the door, and I mean, just look at the door itself and how much more interesting it suddenly becomes once I add this radial filter. So, dodge and burning is just, it's an amazing thing, especially with a sunset picture where you have a relatively, you know, colorful, but at the same time, flat lighting scheme. It can really transform your picture from kind of good into truly amazing. And I'm not gonna skip anything. I'm gonna do everything, all of the dodge and burning while recording without any skipping forward or anything. Uh, even though it might take five minutes or so, I really think that it could be very beneficial to see what I actually do in detail, especially Dutch and burning wise. So once again, I think maybe some smaller filters could be needed here on the house, you know, just in some small areas. Then go a little bit into the minus whites and go here into color. Just go into the color for this filter right here. Bring down the saturation to really almost nothing. 
you bring it to another area and once again just right click duplicate bring it to an area that you think it works and even just try out whether it works or not if it doesn't just move it away or delete the adjustment it's really all about trying out the different things especially if you're new to dodge and burning so now i'm just going to add some additional ones here maybe with a little bit more color in this particular filter so let's do that right here just around um, plus 18 percent or 18 percent into saturation works pretty well and i'm gonna add some filters once again this is something i usually do without recording it because it becomes very repetitive and there's only so much i can really explain but i do think once again uh, if you're just starting out with dodge and burning it is really valuable to see the whole process so let's add another one right here and really complexify the lighting even within a certain object such as this bush here just add a little bit more lighting more complexification and at the end maybe another one over here on the roof a pretty big one actually a pretty long one and just add some more differentiation right here. So I really hope this doesn't lag because it is a very hardware intensive task, especially combining with uh, recording this whole process. So I hope there won't be any lags. But in terms of the house, let's actually just quickly see from before any dodge and burning and here is after. I mean, this is literally night and day. It's a huge difference and it already makes the picture look so much more interesting. And I'm not even done yet. So I'm going to add another rail filter, a pretty big one with plus exposure, plus whites and even a bit of warm color here for the foreground. And I really just want to make this whole, you know, foreground, which is kind of blue in itself, also have some differentiation, some more interesting lighting scheme and color scheme. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here, maybe even more into the plus lighting and make it a little bit bigger, draw it like this. And this is really starting to slow down after adding so many rail filters, but I really want to complexify everything here. Once again, another one over there. And another very important thing to notice is that even if you add such big rail filters, if you have the feather set to 100, it actually affects a way smaller part of the actual picture because the feather is so big. So that is why I can add so many big rail filters without affecting the whole picture. So let's see, right click duplicate and add another one over here towards the well. I do think that works pretty good, pretty well. And maybe some more on this, on these leaves, just to add some more lighting, some more differentiation here as well. And maybe not quite as much here on these leaves, right click duplicate and just bring them over here as well. So once again, there's really a lot to be done and not so much explained because it becomes relatively repetitive after a while. And after you figure it out, after you really understand what Dodge and Burning does, it is really a pretty simplistic task and you won't even have to really try out where the filters work. You can really just go to an area and um, already know where it works and where it doesn't. So now I think I have pretty much all of my plus exposure real filters. So here is before any, here is after huge difference really nothing comparable but i'm not done yet because i do think um that the overall color scheme i might just want to change it a little bit here on the house so i'm gonna go into the color of just one filter at first and just change the color a little bit get some differentiation in there maybe towards the filters on the right a little bit more into the bluish colors almost something like that might work actually really just a little bit of saturation 
and actually do the same thing with another filter up here. So once again, just complexifying the color and truly make everything unique and truly special. So now in terms of the plus exposure rail filters, I think I'm pretty much done. Maybe I'm actually gonna light up these two lanterns or these two lights right here, but um, I'm gonna do that later. But first of all, I'm just gonna add some negative exposure rail filters and negative exposure rail filters tend to not have quite as big of an impact as the plus exposure ones, but they're still very important to put in between the plus exposure filters to create more differentiation between those filters and between your whole picture. So I'm just gonna right click duplicate, add another one over here, maybe not quite as far as I did with the other one. And once again, just make this different uh, exposure difference, this uh, shading difference, so you add additional interest. And another one over here, right click duplicate, and maybe one over here on the plants, right click duplicate, just one in between here with a little bit more into the minus exposure. Then right click duplicate again, and just move it up here and make this one a little bit longer. By the way, if you're not interested in all of that, becomes, because it does really become very repetitive, you can of course just jump forward and see the conclusion at the end of the final picture and the raw file and all of that stuff. But I'm gonna finish it up real quick here, so maybe a little bit of a, you know, actually a pretty big, uh, minus exposure rail filter over the entire left side and you might ask yourself why add plus exposure filters and then a big minus exposure one. The thing is you can still add complexity and differentiation within a certain spot that you might want to be a little bit darker. So it's really, you know, once you get used to dodge and burning, you can have so many different options, so many different possibilities to add difference and um, complexity to your picture. And I'm just gonna add another one over here to create some more interest and some more complexity over there. And I don't think I'm gonna add too many more minus exposed rail filters, maybe just a smaller one right there. Just resize that one and go around, you know, here and maybe even another one over there. So maybe a last one actually over here. And I do think that is it in terms of the minus exposure rail filters. So now what I'm actually gonna do is zoom in and do some last dodge and burning, which is just making these two lamps go on. And the way I'm doing that is just And also just make it a little bit smaller on the top so it doesn't look as uh, fake and it looks a lot more natural. So then as I zoom out here and look at the picture, it really does look a lot better even though I do have to fine tune the size in terms of the left and right here. And that should really do the trick and do the job and yeah. So then another thing that you do want to do most of the time is just add a big rail filter with some plus exposure as well. Not quite as much as you've done with the actual lamp, but also mix that with some color. And that way you just have a much more natural lighting scheme around the actual lamp rather than just you know, um, the lamp itself. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the left and I do think that should work pretty well. So yeah, that looks actually really great. So as a last thing actually to this entire picture, before I do that though, let me show you before any dodge and burning and here is after. Once again, as I said before, it's really night and day and a huge difference. So dodge and burning, especially in sunset pictures and pictures like this is, you can change your picture completely. So then the last thing that I wanted to do is just grab two graduated filters and the first one I'm just gonna put over one half of the picture with a very soft gradient and just kind of angle it according to the lighting scheme. As you can see, this is really kind of the dark um, half of the picture and the other side is the kind of the bright half. So I'm gonna go down a little bit into the exposure here actually 
maybe a bit more and then create another graduated filter and pretty much just go in parallel over the other and this time go a little bit into the plus exposure. And what this will do is just complexify the lighting scheme even more. It will give you a nice graduation, a very subtle graduation, but it is noticeable for sure from the very bright parts to the kind of darker right-ish areas. So let me actually think whether there is something I want to do at the very end before saying it's I'm done with the picture. And I do think there is actually. So I'm going to go back to the rail folders here and just go to this one I've added down here. Because as it is, I really like the dodge and burning, but maybe a minus exposure one would actually work better in this particular spot just to create some more interest compared to the other one. And a little bit into the plus contrast as well, bring away this color. And I do actually think it works if I don't go quite as far with it. So yeah, this is really the picture. I'm not gonna do anything more to it. So let's go here into the history. And I know this is a very long tutorial, but I really wanted to go in depth with every single thing, especially the dodge and burning. And here is the raw file. I mean, it's a completely different picture. It's so much flatter, it's so much less interesting. The colors are just so much more the same. And at the end, if we look at the picture with uh, all of the adjustments, especially the dodge and burning, I mean, it really looks super interesting. There's so much going on, so many details, so much complexification, and it's really night and day. So here, once again, to the left is before, to the right is after, here we go. And it just, I mean, I really love this picture. So that was it. Thank you very much for watching this very long tutorial and keep in mind that all of these adjustments, you don't necessarily have to go as far as I have done here. You can, for example, not go quite as far into the minus highlights, not add as much saturation and really do all of that with all of these adjustments here and at the end still get a very interesting and dynamic picture, but uh, just, you know, according to your liking and according to your preference. So that was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching this very, very long video. I hope you found it helpful and if you stuck around so long, it hopefully was. If you found it helpful, then please leave me a thumbs up. And if you did not find it helpful, you found it way too long, not well explained or anything like that, then please leave me a thumbs down. It really helps me out a lot to see which kind of videos I should make in the future. And also if you have any feedback, suggestions or questions or even, you know, requests for future videos, then just leave them in the comments down below. So once again, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one, Lightroom tutorials, Photoshop tutorials and all sorts of photography videos in the future. And as a very last thing, if you really, really found it helpful, then why not share it with your friends so they can also learn from this video, would be hugely appreciated and helps me out a ton. But anyways, thank you once again very much for watching, keep on editing pictures, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Have you ever dreamed of having your own website so you can display your pictures in a professional way and make everything just look how you want it to, but you didn't really know how to code or how to rent servers, or you don't have the thousands of dollars to pay a coder? Well, what if I would tell you that you can do all of that and build your own website and make it look amazing and you don't need any coding knowledge with SmugMug? Because with SmugMug you can make your very own website and make it look great. It offers beautiful templates to choose from while still being 100% customizable. It has unlimited storage on any plan so you can literally upload as many pictures as you want, whether it be a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand or more. It has excellent 24-7 customer support, so you can literally just open a chat once you need help and you will usually get answered within a minute. It is used by professional photographers all over the world to build their portfolios such as Alir Locardi, Benjamin Van Wang and Chris Borkart, and all of that starts from less than $3 a month. 
So get your 14 day free trial today by clicking the link in the video description and you will get more information about SmugMug and you can sign up for 14 days absolutely free and start building your own website without having to pay or commit to anything. And then after the 14 days, if you like everything, then you will also get 15% off any paid plan. So be sure to check out the link in the video description and start building your very own website today.